found it. It was laying on the black footboard over there, blended in with the black handle. I wonder I couldn't find it. Camouflaged. He did that on purpose. All right. So these are straight slot screws again. Have to get a little star washer on there, so that's good. Okay, we've got a short wire and a long wire. Put them whichever works best for you. It's best to do this before any of this other stuff goes on here because this switch is going to be buried behind three inches of crap. Yep. And the wrong one going the wrong hole. Oh well. The problem with this design is it's going to want to short out the direction of switches on here. No matter what you do, this is going to want to come down and touch this one, which will short it. And if I can tighten this up a little bit more and rotate it this way, I'll eliminate that problem. As I recall, I had it pretty tight. We'll see if we can do it some more. So we're going to hold the switch. We need to hold the bracket or the T. Okay, there's the T being held. And what size is this? Big. It's called a crescent wrench size. That's what size it is. Pretty tight. Okay, that gets the position so the wires will be not trying to eat themselves up. So when you put a switch in there, don't put it vertical, put it at a 45 degree angle or flat. Okay, I look for the post here. Flat would probably be best, but this one's getting pretty tight, so I'm going to leave it this position. Tight. See, I'm still trying to go down and short out. So if you take a screwdriver, stick it between the post, like that. Keeps it apart. Ideally, you want to put a little loop in the wiring like that to get a little bit of jiggle room so it'll vibrate and not be too big of a deal. Okay, 
that part is in there. Oh, that was a pain in the butt to do. What a shocker. Okay, so now we need to move back over to the coil over here. Okay, so we get all that in there. These are our two coil wires. That's going to go that way. This one needs to go up through here. Right through all these top of this. Should be on the inside over there. So it needs to go through the middle of this pack of wires right here. Lay it in there correctly so it's out of the way. sitting there nice and flat. Hello. Yep. One on a primary cover? Yeah. With your bike? Mm, you got a sample of it? There's two or three different variations of that O-ring that go in there, and I'm not sure which one you're using. And you're in the overlap years between Evo and Twin Cam, so it's kind of a toss-up which one you have. Yep. I don't know which one it is for sure. I can guess it's going to be the earlier one, which is just a round O-ring, but I couldn't tell you 100% if that's what it is. Okay. Yes, I have them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On a brand new motor, yes. Very hot. It's way down bottom of my own first startup. But you know, it's, it should cool down every time you ride it. Mm -hmm. No. Doesn't hurt, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be here for a couple more hours at least. All right, bye. Yes, I do tech calls all the time while I'm working, as you can tell. Okay, it's kind of hard to get these mixed in here. These aren't really stacked in there correctly, but. They're kind of twisted together a little bit, but anyway, they're in there, so when you put the cover on there, it shouldn't pinch anything. It's below the surface of the steel here, so when you tighten it down, you should be good. You want to make sure you don't have it jammed up against the, the screw stud, obviously. So now I'm going to put, the, put this up on there. It shouldn't short on anything. Actually, a lot of these, they have a little piece of a nylon that goes up under here. This particular one don't have one. Or if he does, it doesn't, it's not here. I could probably look in this box real quick. Nope, they don't give you one with a wearing harness. I didn't think they did. The only time they give them to you, one is when you buy a whole plus <coughs> terminal strip plate, then they'll give you one. 
that's the only time. Okay, so now this should go right up in here like this. I should be able to push it in there straight and flat. It'd be hard against the stud and not anything else. <clears throat> it seems like it's in there like it's supposed to be. Now we've got this wire here, I don't like it being, so I can't put this together just yet. Was this wire here? Oh, this was the uh, oil pressure. It needs to be on the other side of the plate. So you got to kind of push it back in there. Of course, it's really tight. It doesn't want to go between the motor and the plate. Loosen this up one more time. There it goes. Now it's out of the way. It's all this little detail here that really makes things not burn up on you down the road. So see how you got protection layer here. Protection layer here when you pull the cover down you're fine. This goes right up against here. There's nothing sharp to rub against. All at the top everything's protected fairly well. So this one here is going to be a little tight. If you move it over just like that you get, now you got room for it to rattle around by itself. And this one here is going to be up here someplace. Ideally that should be a little bit lower. You can see that jams those wires up there, which is not good. So what do we got back here? See there's a whole bunch of wires jammed in there. I don't like just jamming wires in there for no reason, so. Alright, that'll probably fit in there now. Like that. Looks like it was. So it can fit in there now. flat washer on here which this cover does not have so I need to find some flat washers there was a whole bag that we just found over here earlier and they have been moved and hidden more hidden stuff Hardware. 
Everything's in baggies. You can't see shit in a baggie. I hate baggies. This is for gas tank hardware. Yeah, whoopie do. Like I can't figure out what gas tank bolts look like. Okay, I want two washers. I don't give a shit what they're for before. These are now gonna be for this. We'll worry about the gas tank later. So you got a lock washer and a regular nut. If you use a lock nut, you don't need to use a lock washer, obviously. This bike we're using all stock stuff, so it's using lock washers and plain nuts. If you want to look stock, that's how you do it. If you want to make it stronger, you put lock nuts on everything. And that's why we're not using any Loctite either, because it's probably going to be all coming back apart again. But we don't know. That would be surprised for the owner to do. Uh, don't use 9 sixteenths. You want to use half inch. Does work as good. Okay. It's in there good. Cutting wire there. Okay, this one goes right on top. This one here goes down underneath to the bottom. And we didn't fish that down before I put the coil in there, so now it doesn't fit. And I can even fish with it and screw with it for about five minutes, or I can just loosen this up real quick and put it where it goes. And if you torque these too much, you snap the studs off, so you have to have an idea what your torque is when you're doing the stuff. this one for? One is probably powering the um, brake switch. A lot of times that's where the power comes from for these things. I I'm just going to Okay, that would not be going to that point because that's an ignition. I don't know what number one means. Okay, so my guess is it doesn't go there. Next choice is it goes to the regulator on the other side if this is actually a hot wire. This might be a hot wire coming up off the dash up here, which would be your 12 volt power source. So that might be what this is. I don't know. Unknown. If so, it goes that direction over there, which is going to be hard to do right now because I'm over on this side of the bike with it. So if I had to guess, I guess it goes that direction because it doesn't go this direction. Okay, we already got the wire down here for the ignition. All right. I get to take this part again. That's a test fit. Lock up. That's what you call it when you screw up. So you know it takes something apart. You haven't done one in about 25 years. It takes a while to figure it out. That went to the ground. Rags working.
Okay, so this is coming out of here. Okay, so this is going to be going out the other side, I'm guessing. It's going to be fun to do that. There ain't no room to go that way. Make room. I don't like that. Too much pressure on the, on the wires. All right. So instead of having the, the wire pushed hard up against this plate right here, I now have the insulated wire, or the shield of one here, whatever you want to call it. One of the harness is in there. Those are just being crushed flat in. And then this one here will go right on top and crush it the rest of the way in there. And now the wire's coming out the other side right over here where the regulator's at, because that's probably a hot wire for the regulator. That'd be my guess. And that's what I'm gonna go with. There's nothing else over on this side of the bike that needs it, so it probably wouldn't hurt if I uh, actually tested it and see if that's what it is, but eh, why do that? That takes all the fun out of it. When you actually check stuff to see where it goes. Just go for it. flat without binding. Feels good. If it's rocking back and forth like it's on a wire, it probably is on a wire. This one's feeling, you can feel it flat against the stud, so that's what you want to feel. So if you don't have a good feel for doing this kind of stuff, you better pay attention. You better learn how to get a feel. I want you to be back in here again after you fry the bike. If those wires get pinched in there, there will be a fire. And the circuit breakers and the hardware aren't that good. Okay, there we go. The 
Go in there. I'm assuming there's a nut and washer for that that's missing. And this one down here is loose. It's nice. Get tighten that up a little bit. So we'll have to go hunt down a nut and washer for the top. Okay, that one's tight. So just get that one mounted up would be good. So this part of the wiring is done. So I'm gonna get everything on this side of the bike hooked up except for the generator, which technically is on the front of the bike, not this side. So that goes on the other side of the bike. We'll have to hook that up on the other side. This goes on the other side. All right, so I think we got everything we got on this side. Things up out of the way. I'm gonna go over there and revisit the uh, oil pressure switch over there. All this stuff is nice and free. We got clearance for everything. So everything's nice and tucked in tight. We got full access to work on everything on this side without hitting on anything. Speedo cable flipped up. It's back down. So this will be determined later what's gonna happen back here. And then uh, all of this stuff is all tucked up under here real nice and good. So we're not worrying about any of that. All right, so all the wiring's on this side of the bike is looking pretty good. And so this we'll have to figure out later, but not now. Okay, I'm not gonna put the exhaust pipe back in until we make sure all this stuff works because I'll have to pick the pipe right back off again. And over here, this stuff here, like I said, I think it just sits on this side. Here's your clip up here that holds the main harness on. So it probably goes up there. So my guess is probably goes on the inside of this cable. If I had to make a guess. Not sure where it goes yet, so I'll figure that out later. I'm assuming that goes up there like that. I would guess it kind of comes down through here. So this wire here. Just where we're at. Seems kind of a tight stretch down to there. So I'm going to put this on the inside, I think, of this one. This looks like some kind of a ground. I have to see how that's attached. If that's a ground, it was probably underneath one of these bolts under here. We'll have to figure that out before we get all done. Okay, so normally I don't put these on the inside of this stuff, but in this case, I think I'm going to. This. Looks good. There we go. Run this up high, looks better to me. Looks higher, looks better high than low. Okay, now this is free to be wherever it wants to be. So that's going to get hooked up to a generator way down there at some point. Okay, so this side looks decent. See how you got that strap mark right there? It's right where that clamp is, see? So we'll go ahead and hook that up. So it looks like it belongs there. One thing about used harnesses, it's always evidence of where things were. fits in there now. See all this wadded up stuff here? 
It looks like it went like that, doesn't it? That'd be my guess. Okay. So this one here. Okay, that's a neutral switch. So that goes in and out of that. Normally they ground through here on the later bike. On this bike they go through. So this needs to be grounded. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one bolt out, I think. And we'll stuff that up under there and tighten it back down. And that should hook that up, I hope, in the right direction. All right, that should make that work correctly. All right. I'm going to do that and we'll be back.